And I recently got an opportunity to race these two bikes in the same hair scramble in two different motos. In this video, I'm going to tell you which bike is the best bike for hair scrambles for me. So this is my 2018 KTM 250 XCW. In the first moto, I raced the KTM. So let's check that out now. KTM fired up quick on the dead start, as it always does, and I got a pretty good launch toward the first turn. My friend Chris pushed me outside there, and a few guys got past me on the inside. I fall into sixth here out of 15 in my class. I'm in the C40 Plus class, by the way, and this is the Southeast Cross Country Association Round 3 on May 23rd, 2020 in Plantersville, Alabama. This is the first race we've had since the coronavirus shut everything down back in the spring. It's a partly cloudy day with temps in the mid 80s and it's a pretty hot day for a race. I'm behind Johnny Crane here and we're catching some of the guys in the class in front of us. This guy gets a little out of shape and takes a tumble, but I managed to squeeze by him. At this point, we're getting in some tighter single track in the course and catching a lot of slower traffic. This is really the story of the first lap. Lots of slow traffic and bottlenecks to work through. Come on, Johnny, let's go, buddy. Come on, Johnny. There's my friend, Skip. Turned out his rear brake had locked up on him. KTN 250 XCW really loves the twisty stuff like this. I started racing in 2018, and every race I've done so far has been on this bike. I've got over 200 hours on it, so I'm definitely comfortable on it. With that said, it handles great, and the suspension works really well for me. I can lug it down low, it's got really good low end torque, and it's almost impossible to stall. It has more power than I could possibly need on top end. Caught up to my friend Garrett here. He races in the C30 Plus class and he starts on the row in front of me. Garrett driving good today. The end of the first lap I'm in sixth place but take a look at the times. There were 10 of us within 30 seconds of each other. Traffic was a factor but the competition is really close in this class. In the second lap I'm trying to get past the number 13 Kawasaki. I thought I had to pass May, but ended up knocking the guy over. 
Sorry about that, Brandon. So after lap two, I fell to eighth place and I finished the moto in seventh in my class. My last lap was my best time at 20 minutes and 53 seconds. Looking at the cumulative times, the top eight of us were extremely close and within 37 seconds of each other. All right, now that the first moto is done, it's time for the second moto. And in the second moto, I raced my 2015 Honda CRF 250X. So let's check that out. Somehow between motos, my camera lens got cracked, but luckily I had this protective cover over it, and it's just a protector that got cracked. I love my GoPro Hero 8 Black, but the lens is the Achilles heel because it's not replaceable like previous models. If you have one, be sure to keep a tempered glass protector on the lens. I'll put a link in the description for the screen protectors I use. The dead start had me a little worried as the four-stroke Honda is not a surefire quick start like the two-stroke. Also, the Honda doesn't like starting gear, so I'm in neutral and I had to take the time to shift in the gear before I could take off. The bike started pretty quickly, but I'm a little bit farther back in the pack than I was in the first moto. Just to recap, I had a one hour moto on the KTM, then had a one hour break, and now this is a one hour second moto. I guess I didn't get hydrated enough because I'm dealing with forearm cramps early in this moto. I stalled the bike here because I couldn't get my hand open to grab the clutch. I lost a few seconds there getting the bike restarted and had to make some of the same passes again. One good thing about the Honda is that other riders could hear me coming when I was approaching. You don't always hear two strokes coming up behind you, but you always hear the four strokes. I've put about 10 hours of ride time on the Honda since I bought it, but this is the first time I've raced it. It took me a while, probably half lap, to adjust to the engine braking of the bike. I think my habits of racing the two-stroke are to blame. I was having a hard time getting my hydration tube because the minute I took my hand off the throttle, the bike would almost come to a stop. Still working through a lot of traffic in this moto. I think one of the biggest differences I noticed between the two bikes was in the tight turn sections of the course. The Honda felt much heavier in these sections. The bike is heavier plus extra rotating mass. The four stroke just takes more effort to change direction. I didn't have any crashes or anything terribly unusual happen in the second moto. Oh, except the snake incident. Let's compare lap times between the two bikes. For Moto 1 lap 1, I had a time of 22 minutes 11 seconds. For Moto 2 lap 1, I had a time of 22 minutes 53 seconds. I was 42 seconds faster on the KTM. If you take out 10 seconds of loss from stalling the Honda, then the difference will be about 32 seconds. For Moto 1 lap 2, I had a time of 21 minutes even. For Moto 2 lap 2, I had a time of 21 minutes 58 seconds. 58 seconds faster on the KTM. For Moto 1 lap 3, I had a time of 20 minutes 53 seconds. For Moto 2 lap 3, I had a time of 21 minutes 55 seconds. I was 1 minute and 2 seconds faster on the KTM. For the cumulative times, I was 2 minutes 42 seconds faster on the KTM. For the combined results for the day, I finished in 6th place in my class and I'm currently tied for 4th place in the points for the season. I really enjoy riding the Honda for fun, but for me, the KTM 250 XCW will continue to be my primary race bike. It just works better for me, and that may be because I'm just more accustomed to it. I prefer the engine characteristics of the two-stroke with the quick starting, down-low lugging ability, and power to spare, along with minimal engine braking. The WP at Spore Forks and PDS Shock have always worked really well for me, and that was the case in this race as well. If I were going to continue to race the Honda, I would definitely have the suspension customized for me as I felt it was a little harsh at times during this race. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. That really helps us out and is very much appreciated. I always read and respond to comments, so let me know down in the comments what you think about the comparison of these two bikes in this race. If you were me, which bike would you race in future Hair Scramble races? And be sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. 
Ultimately, it's always good to have choices. And now you have two. You can watch this video next or this one. Your choice. Thanks for watching.